Good day, everybody. It's Jay from Backcountry Wrench, and welcome to another video. We are going to work on the JK today. Over this past little while, I've noticed that my steering has started to get really sloppy. Now, the benefit of this is, is that I got the Terraflex HD steering kit. So, in order to rebuild it, I just got all new ball joints. We're going to drop the steering, press the ball joints out, get the new ones in. Hopefully, they'll tighten up the steering, and all will be fine. Before we get started on that, I had a package show up in the mail and it's been a long time since a fan has sent me a package. This package is coming to us from Brad Baxter from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Carefully open it up. Got the duct tape seal here. I don't even know which is the proper way up, which is the proper way down. Oh yeah, eight pack mixer. It's always a good day when you get beer in the mail. So this is One Great City Brewing Company, eight pack mixer, Falcon Blonde, 5% alcohol, Belgian E-Spirit Whitbriar, 4.5%, Mad Scientist IPA, 6.5%, an intrepid 7% strong beer. Holy shit. Right on, Brad. Thanks a lot for sending me out the beers. I'm going to get these in the cooler, get started on this project. And then once we're done, we're going to try one of those bad boys out. I really appreciate it. They're all tall boys too, which is actually really nice. So I am fully aware that the ball joints are adjustable. And I could tighten them up, but the real problem is, is that especially in this one here is where I noticed it, is that the rubber boots are all old, deteriorating, starting to crack. This suspension's pretty heavy duty, and I'm going to rebuild it because the new one was, I think about 12, 1300 bucks Canadian. Or I think all new ball joints for shipping was closer to $400. First thing we'll do is we'll get some jack stands under it and use this Vivor jack, which actually comes in quite handy. I just put a little pinch rail adapter that I made a few years ago underneath there and add the pressure with the Schrader valve so it's nice and slow so I can control the last thing you want to do is have something slip, go shooting out, so it raises it up nice and slow, yeah right about like that. I'll get this power fish jack up there, raise it up just a little bit more. Come down. There. Gotta get this far side lifted up. Removing the tire gives us some access and you can see right there, that boot is shot, shut her down. Yeah, those threads don't look too friendly, so we're gonna get some good old BB blaster on them, help lubricate them. So I gotta drop the steering stabilizer. So I'm gonna take these detents on the bottom here. We're gonna back them off. Cause these are what kind of dimple the steering to keep them in place. And then I'm just going to 
bust these ones free by hand with my overpriced snap-on ratchet with the pink handle that I got for dirt cheap because nobody wanted to buy it and by dirt cheap I think uh, I think eight years ago it was still 120 bucks this is kind of a rip-off when I look at it now you don't need to spend that kind of money on tools that's just foolishness and we got the old Milwaukee I didn't break it free with the Milwaukee because I was feeling weak earlier and that's how this thing is it's weak the 3 8 Milwaukee is weak as fuck it's good if the fasteners are loose but if there's a little bit of torque I just find it's useless all right that comes down that is that there that's free good gonna bust out the old air cat t55 th <laughs> this little bad boy half inch has some bite we're gonna see if we can pull those nuts off now <laughs> oh yeah it spins them right off I'm just going to spin that down right till it's flush. Yeah. That one had a little bit more oof, but we got it. I'm going to spin this one off. Excellent. I'm gonna thread it back on by hand. Butterfingers! Drop the hammer! Alright, give her a couple good whacks. Drop down. And that keeps it from falling on the ground. Oh yeah, that one there is super sloppy in there. This one, or this one here is going to be any tighter. Be like a little pick or something. I want to carefully get it off because if the boot is salvageable, I want to keep it as a spare, but it looks kind of rough. Yeah, I was playing that one too. Definitely could have been tightened up if the boots weren't in such bad shape. Got that crusty snap ring we gotta pull out. And we're gonna use a ball joint press and then press them right out. It should be easy peasy. Let's see how hard that snap ring is stuck in there. There we go. Snap ring is out. Get the side out while I'm at it. Perfect. Out. This is where the moment of truth will shine. See how seized those are. We're going to get them out with the Power Fist Ball Joint Service Tool and Master Adapter Kit. I sold my other one from Princess Auto and got this one because there's way more accessories. And it was on sale when I bought it. Let's get this bad boy over. Never even been used yet. This is going to be the first time. Just going to put some oil on the threads. Because this is our first time. A little oil on the threads goes a long way. Keep it from binding up and such. This is going to be the make or break. So I'm gonna use this cup right here because it goes through with this part here, as you can see. And then we're gonna push on this end 
and then out. Damn, it doesn't seem to be moving. That is not good. That is not good. I think I might have to bust out the hydraulic jack. These things are seized. Looks like it's starting to come free now. Shit show's living up to its name, that's for sure. Those suckers were in there tight. Use a combination of an air hammer, a regular hammer to beat them, and then finally, once I busted them free, use the ball joint press. Already destroyed one cup, and I still got two more to go. What are the odds that those are going to be a shit show as well? Damn. Those were in there solid, rusted solid. Shit show living up to its name. So I get these two out without any issue, then I will be laughing. I think these ones are going to be the same way, but I had to check, make sure this ball joint cup is going to fit over top of there before I get too crazy. This is going to be interesting. There, one sets out. It's like one of the set screws has come out on this one here. On well, a good note come out so I don't have to worry gonna air hammer it first and then beat it with a hammer to bust it free air hammers to break up some of the rust starting to separate I think This could be the gatekeeper right here.
Something snapped. Perfect. You shouldn't have your hand on there like I did in case that C-clamp broke, but we fared out all right. The struggle is over. We can start assembling. Now with the new ball joints, you see that groove right there and we got a pin and the pin is going to fit in the ball joint like that. And then depending on where this detent is on the arms, that's where it's gonna go. And I put a B on there for bottom. So I know where these go. For orientation, now I don't like to buff these out. I'm just gonna put some light oil in them because if you buff them out, you run the risk of enlarging them large enough that uh, those ball joints just might drop in and that's not what you want. I don't think it really matters what kind of oil you use. It's just gonna act as a very fine film of lubricant. And my ball, or my pin I should say, and I know it slides in just like such. Perfect. I know how that one's going to go in. So the ball joint cups are gonna use this dowel right here, which is gonna fit over top. Just gonna press it down and then we need this receiver on the bottom that it can push it through and into this cup. All right, so then, just wanna very slowly Then we're in. That one is in. All right, pressed and flush. Let's get that other one in. You already have the rubber installed, but not the not the spring. So make sure you pull it off because it could very well damage the boot during installation. I should not have to replace these ever again for as long as I own this Jeep. Slipped off, we don't want that to happen. Oh, shit. Hopefully I'm fucker the cup. Carefully put the rubber boot back in place, and then before we put our snap rings in, we want to make sure that our little pins are in on both sides, and they are so we're good. Snap rings can go in. That one's in. Excellent, we're good to go. One is ready to go in. Slide this bad boy underneath. There we go. Get that one on. help if I grab the nut and not the grease fitting cap, eh? Shut her down. 
There's always something. I don't know if you can see, but I got an Allen key wedged up against the frame. Ah, so I can tighten this up. Because otherwise it would just spin. And I designed it that way, so this one here is solid now. Notice there's grease in these, but I'm just gonna give it a couple shots like that. Oh, the grease nipple is caught. Jesus, fuck. Seriously? The struggle is real all the time. Damn. How does this even happen? Sucks balls. I gotta do this the old fashioned way. Let's hope I can just spin it on, but it goes so far, and then don't go no more. This is the last ball joint. It just went right in. Let's get this last boot on and put the O-rings. Or should I say snap rings? That will be good to go. Once again, make sure my pin is in there. That pin's gonna make sure that the ball joint does not spin inside. Heavy as fuck. Now somebody's gonna ask and you do not use Loctite on these because they are a stover nut. And because they're a stove or nut, that's why we gotta painfully use the Allen key to do them up. Alright. Last one. Things are looking good. Bolt the steering stabilizer back on, get the tires back on, take it out for a test spin. Steering definitely feels a lot tighter just by moving it around. Let's get these jack stands out. That is taking up most of the day. Last thing, torque it down. Bust out the old Pro Point half inch torque wrench. Look at that beauty right there. Thought we're gonna have a holy shit moment here. Because those ball joints were probably some of the toughest ones I've ever experienced. They did not want to come out at all. Get these tires torqued up. There you have it. The good old Power Fist Master Ball Joint Service Kit is going to live for another day. Only one casualty of war. Yeah, you gotta be careful with these things. Not too worried about the cups be getting deformed. You always gotta be, if you put too much pressure on, you gotta know what you think is the limit and just don't go crazy because these C-clamps, doesn't matter what brand name they are, they can't break. And when something breaks under pressure, it's violent. Always take care when using these. Make sure you have safety glasses, even a face shield or something, because if these let go, shut her down.
you're most likely going to feel it. Always back your torque wrench off. This pro point has been pretty good to me. Let's put her away. Hey, now I can take it out for a spin. Just got to make sure there is nothing hanging out. Because remember the chainsaw chain accident. That was a huge mistake. Carvins, are you making biscuits? Are you making biscuits, Carvin? Are you? Is that the closest you're going to get to me for cuddling? Is it? Garvin's. You're not a very cuddly kitty unless it's bedtime, are you? You just like to be near me. Hello. I know, I can just hear you purring away. Yeah. See? That's a good girl. I can tell you right now, just from taking it out for a little drive, steering is way tighter. Like a hundred times before the steering wheel was all loose and sloppy. It's a million times better now, I'm telling you right now. All right, shut her down. I feel so much more better. Before, it was like chucking a hot dog down a hallway. Last time I took my Jeep out for a trip on the highway, I went to Cabela's to buy some things. And on the ride home, the steering was so bad, I had to have both hands on the steering wheel because it was wandering all over the place. And this is one of those things, especially with steering, is that unless something major happens, it gradually happens over time, and you just become accustomed to it, you become used to it, and then all of a sudden, once you replace it, you're like, holy shit, that's night and day difference. That steering is so tight now. Do you know what time it is? It's motherfucking beer time. That's what time it is. Let's grab one of these beers that Brad had got us. Much obliged. Let's have uh, this bad boy right here. Falcon Blonde. Falcon Blonde's coming in at 5% alcohol. Yeah. All right, motherfucking beer time. I want to thank you, Brad, for sending me the beer. Much appreciated. They're tall boys as well. Oh. All the way from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Yeah. Falcon Blonde is totally crushable. This is a great beer. I'd smash this while I'm out camping. Anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Shit show lives up to her name. There's always something with this girl. The struggle is real. Take care, and I'll see you guys later. Motherfucking beer damn!